Hello students, welcome to my YouTube channel Medico Education. Today we are going to learn about pulmonary tuberculosis. This is our third respiratory disorder. We have learnt about asthma and pneumonia before this. And the objectives of today's lecture are definition, causes, classification, risk factors, types, clinical manifestation, pathophysiology, diagnostic evaluation, complications, medical management, nursing management, and health education. Definition It is an infectious disease caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis. So tuberculosis is basically a contagious disease. That means it spreads from the infected person to someone else. You can get TB by breathing in the air droplets from the cough or sneezing of the infected person. So mycobacterium tuberculosis is the causative agent and mycobacterium is resistant to several antibiotics and can survive in many extreme conditions so mycobacterium tuberculosis that is the causative agent that causes pulmonary tuberculosis it is characterized by the formation of tubercles that are the round nodules of what the overgrowth or granulomas in the lungs Granulomas mean localized collection of cells usually produced in response to an infectious process. It may be transmitted to other body parts such as meninges, bones, kidneys and lymph nodes. Causes or etiology So number one cause is mycobacterium tuberculosis which is a very strong bacterium and it is resistant to several antibiotics and you need broad spectrum antibiotic against it. It is transmitted through air droplets. That means if you breathe in the air where the infected person has cough or sneeze, you may get that infection. Now let's discuss what are the risk factors. Malnutrition, excessive alcohol intake, children under 5 years of age, immunosuppressive agents, HIV infection, poor health status, and smoking. It particularly affects low resource countries. It particularly affects the low resource countries. It is also known as disease of the poor. So people with weakened immunity have a greater risk of falling ill from TB. Clinical manifestations. In pulmonary tuberculosis, patient is free from symptoms in early stages of the disease. So this early stage is known as exposure stage. There are basically three stages of uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. The number one is exposure. That here is called the early stage. That here is called the early stage in which the patient is free from the symptoms. Then comes the latent phase. A few symptoms are found including fatigue, anorexia, low-grade fever, cuff with sputum production and hemopotasis, chest pain, malaise, weight loss, irregular menstruation in women. So these are the symptoms we are going to see in the latent phase that is the second stage. Then comes the third stage acute phase. In acute phase it is also known as the active phase in which you get the symptoms like high grade fever, chills, pleuritic pain and cough. Let's understand what is the pathophysiology of pulmonary tuberculosis. When the mycobacterium when the mycobacterium bacilli inhales, it is transmitted through the airways to the alveoli where it is multiplied and it transfers into the lymph system and bloodstream in the cerebral cortex, kidneys and bones. When the immune system responds, phagocytosis occur. When the phagocytes engulf to many bacteria, TB lymphocyte bacteria spreads in normal tissues. There is accumulation of exudates in alveoli and bronchopneumonia. How are we going to diagnose pulmonary tuberculosis? So the diagnostic evaluation carried will be physical examination, history collection, chest x-ray, sputum test, presence of acid fast bacilli, Montox test, blood test in which we are going to notice there is an increased WBC and ESR. Complications. There are two basic complications 
of pulmonary tuberculosis that is pleural effusion tb and pneumonia so what will be the medical management medical management broad spectrum antibiotics and antimicrobial drugs are used as i already mentioned that mycobacterium tuberculosis is resistant to several antibiotics and it can survive in many extreme conditions so we are going to use broad spectrum antibiotics these drugs are divided into two categories that is primary agents and secondary agents the primary agents include isoniazid rifampicin ethambutol streptomycin and pyrazinamide secondary agents include capromycin kenamycin pasta that is para amino salicylic acid and cyclosidine nursing management how a nurse is going to manage pulmonary tuberculosis patient assessment assess anxiety level of patient assess airway of patient assess nutritional level of patient check self care capacity assess educational level of patient nursing diagnosis and intervention what diagnosis the nurse is going to make and what interventions she is going to carry out if the patient is having anxiety related to knowledge deficit what the nurse is going to do is provide knowledge about disease condition causes signs and symptoms preventive measures and treatment provide psychological support to the patient and give satisfactory answers to the patient's questions nursing diagnosis ineffective airway clearance if ineffective airway clearance is the nursing diagnosis what the nurse is going to do is keep the patient in upright position for the airway clearance teach deep breathing techniques encourage rest and avoid exertion imbalanced nutrition less than body requirements related to poor appetite fatigue and productive cough provide well balanced diet encourage for vitamin supplements and high protein and high calorie diet vitamin b6 that is pyridoxin helpful to prevent peripheral neuropathy in patients taking inh health education tb is infectious but can be cured by taking medication as prescribed tb is transmitted by droplets as i already told you can get tb by breathing in the air droplets from cough or sneezing of the infected person so this is a contagious disease that spreads from the infected person to someone else so it is transmitted by the droplets and is not carried on articles such as clothing books and eating utensils cover your mouth when coughing laughing and sneezing wash your hands carefully after contact with body substances masks or soiled tissues wear mask in appropriate situations when advised make sure they are tight fitting and change them frequently and after changing them dispose them properly people with tuberculosis are usually not restricted in their activities for more than 2 to 4 weeks after medication is begun tb is no longer treated in isolation in sanatorium if we look into the history tb was treated by isolation in sanatoriums but it is no longer a practice in the modern world tb is um treat tuberculosis is now treated with the medication and the person is staying at home at his own convenience and having medication taking medication at home take your medication exactly as prescribed and report all side effects to your doctor do not stop the medication for any reason without doctor's supervision